I'm speaking with Ann Barclow, and the last time I spoke with Ann, she was the director of horticulture for the city of Greenwood, but she has decided to enjoy other aspects of her life a little more and is now the volunteer coordinator, um, which is just a wonderful position because, Ann, um, I know that you have master gardeners and other people who are just plant geeks, and what fun to be associated with people who want to come and share their time with you. I know you enjoy being with all those great folks. Yep. Yep. It's so much fun. It's a, you know, I still get to boss people around, but they're volunteers that really want to get bossed around. So, so it's really a lot of fun and we couldn't do it without them. A lot of what, although y'all have projects all over town that involve volunteers, but um, the Festival of Flowers is a long-standing tradition up in Greenwood. Tell us a little bit about the history and what all goes on to make that such a special period of time. Sure. Well, you know, I'd originally uh, Park Seed is here, of course, and they had their grower days where they had the trial gardens. And then I guess, you know, up uptown in the chamber of Greenwood, they thought it would be good to partner with them and have the, and they started the Festival of Flowers. And that was like in 1968. So it's been going a long time. Oh. And so it's just kind of to bring people into, into uptown Greenwood. And, and then after a period of time, it got a little stagnant, you know, and so, uh, one of the members of the chamber went to Disney World and saw these uh, topiaries and she said well what about topiaries <laughs> and so they went and they talked to the horticulture department they said well they would train us and so we brought a little group over there to disney and they trained us how to do the topiaries and they recommended we start with four and they thought well the four is not going to be anything so they got 13 of them and yeah. we did we didn't get them all out and they didn't look as professional as they do now, but we were learning. We had a little learning curve. So we've had the topiaries out there for like 12 years now. I think this is our 12th year, and there's almost 40 of them now. So, yeah, so it's really, really fun. Um, that is a tremendous amount of work. And explain how it begins with a frame. I guess someone must come in and construct a frame out of metal first is that well or someone has to design it I guess too. yeah some of the smaller ones like your ducks and and your turtles that you can get them pre-made you can order them which we did uh -huh. Uh -huh. but some of your bigger ones like we've made a mermaid and a huge mermaid <laughs> <laughs> and we had a guy that had a um, a shop in Donald's not too far from Greenwood and he would build them we'd give them the dimensions and all that and he would build the frames for us and so that's kind of how the bigger ones like that got like the Gamecock and that sort of thing got made so yeah and so you've got a frame that's made of wire and really it's so there it is and yeah. how are you going to turn it into something that is just covered with plants and and plant material yeah. how do, tell me how yeah. you're going to go well, about first, that yeah the first thing we do is we stuff it with a uh, sphagnum moss that we get from new zealand and um if it's a big fat topiary like an barbecue, elephant you like barbecue the pig and and the <laughs> elephant will put a little somewhat of a bladder inside to fill up some of the space and then maybe six inches around it we'll stuff it with that sphagnum moss and uh, we stuff it really really tight we don't use soil or anything just just the moss and uh -huh. we stuff it tight and we use a a tool called a dibble that yes. was used to make a hole for a little plug and a plant to go in there. Now, before we do the moss, we put in drip irrigation all through it. And we have different zones that we'll use for the drip irrigation. Like the elephant trunk is definitely going to dry out faster than his body. Sure. So we'll have that on a different zone, like your garden zone at home. You'll have the, the lawn on a different zone than your shrubs, hopefully. <laughs> hopefully you will. And, and then so the elephant, his trunk will water three times a day during the hot summer, where his body may be only five times a week. So, so each one has to have irrigation, the moss, and then the plants that grow. And then we use sheep shears to trim it, trim them and make them. And we pin some of the like the ficus vines, we pin them, so yeah. So when you take them downtown and place them, Anne, 
there has to be irrigation outlets throughout the city just for the topiaries? Yep, yep. We have irrigation just for them, and then we plug them in, and we and we get them going, and we have battery operated timers for the irrigation, so we can set those up to water when we need them. When we have to adjust them, you know, depending on the weather. Sometimes it sure. rains a lot, and we'll shut them all off, and other times it's really hot, and we'll increase it, and so it's a constant monitoring when they're out there too. So it's a microcosm, really, of a well-maintained um, public space. I mean, where certain things, the, the lawn needs more, more and the certain things need less. Um, it's, yeah. it's just compressed down very small. And yeah. again, with the volunteers, I believe y'all start early, early, early growing the plugs that you then put in to add that great splash of color and fun and dynamics to the, to yeah. the topiaries. Yes, we do. And actually, as soon as they come back to the greenhouse in July, we're already starting to take cuttings and like succulents take a long time to grow. So yeah. we'll, we'll take some of the succulents that were on there and start starting them early on. So it's year round. It never stops the, mm. the topiaries and, and, and we start growing plants for the landscape then too. So the, the volunteers love the greenhouse. They love working in there. And we have a lot of uh, information. I try to teach little classes and mini classes and, and give some of the people opportunities to teach also. So we're always learning. Well, and I think that really gives them a, it's not that just, you know, just take this and do this. I mean, you, it's, it's kind of like the master gardener course and that people are learning as they do and gardeners want to learn yeah. and then they can share it you're, and you're teaching them to share things with other people. They're learning how to how to operate the greenhouses and how all that works. And and one of the things I think that y'all do that's interesting in your greenhouses is people are also learning a lot about beneficial insects. I think. Yep, 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 yep. We have a uh, we release a lot of beneficial insects to prey on the other ones. We had little trouble with spider mites this year. They got a little out of control, and but we have a predator mite that is just so fast and so <laughs> and so good. And so we put one mite against another mite, and we'll put lacewing larvae to eat the aphids. Yes, and we've got mealybug destroyers that are called crips. <laughs> so we use them on the mealy bugs and they like eating the eggs and it's fun to watch them you know and so it's just and we've gotten to do that too we we virtually teach out at the schools too and we show them those types of things also and they learn from uh, what we're doing there in the classroom so well and what a fabulous way to let in children know that you know, we all get so tired of swatting mosquitoes and worrying about ticks and things. And how wonderful to let them know that in the brilliant design of nature and evolution that um, that there's something that's a problem, but somebody else is going to come along who's going to take advantage of that problem and um, and recycle it. Um, and, the, and the world just keeps going around and around and around. Great fun. Um, so in the winter, y'all, so of course the topiaries are going to go out what time of year and how long are they out, Ann? They're going to go out uh, in June. They'll be out the whole month of June and the first two weeks in July. And then they'll oh. come home. So you have a little window in there to, to make a trip and see it and see all the topiaries. And we have incredible landscapes surrounding them. Even the bases of the topiaries are just an incredible, beautiful work of art. And so you can come anytime during June and the first two weeks of July. And if you come from far away, there's the inn on the square is right in the center of, of the whole topiary mm -hmm. thing. And so mm -hmm. people could stay overnight if they wanted to. Now the second week in June, is the big weekend and that's where they have the topiary and wine walk and they're going to have a home and garden show which i'm excited about that's pretty new and they're wow. going to have a craft show and that will those both will be at the uh at the greenwood mall and the greenwood mall is really cool too because it has some great murals and history of greenwood it's just i'd send people there if they're visiting so so the greenwood mall will host those events and so. okay and greenwood itself is a has a beautiful downtown. Um, mm -hmm. So many people have come and opened businesses there. It it, it gives you a, a sense of hope of so many downtowns look sad and the Greenwood is thriving and it's a beautiful thing to see. And then also 
you have things all over town that you and your volunteers pollinate gardens and um and then a fabulous monarch way station i believe yep yep we have two monarch way stations and we've really gotten into the whole hummingbird providing for hummingbirds instead of putting out feeders we like plants so we have those and it's kind of funny to watch people waiting on the benches for their doctor appointment and have hummingbirds hovering around them and butterflies so <laughs> it's quite a it's quite a nature uh, experience up there and you know it's just been Last year, you know, was a rough year for, for a lot of us. And, and yes. people came in droves last year for the festival and, and just to be outdoors. And we put together a little scavenger hunt for plants so we could educate people. And there's a tweet on Maine where's a scavenger hunt and you can learn about our local birds. And so there's a lot. It's just nice to get away and get out in nature through everything we've been through. Well, and I think the city fathers and the... Um, people involved in the outdoors and the maintenance all have all embraced this, um, trying to make it all as sustainable and, um, and, and ecologically safe as possible. And a wonderful um, attitude for a city to adopt. I think. It is. It has. I was. I was very surprised, and when I started working here eight years ago, and uh, they are just so supportive of this type of of gardening, and 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 the crew is uh, the horticulture crew is amazing. Not only what they do, but just they're like topiary artists. You know the things that they have changed with the topiaries this year, and they gave the mermaid had silver hair for a couple years. Now she's a redhead. <laughs> You know, the horse, the horse was a war horse last year, and this year it'll it'll be a, a what do you call them? The unicorn. <laughs> it'll be a unicorn. And uh, King Kong is going to have a Barbie doll in his hand, along with the airplane, and he'll have those skyscrapers and and roads that he's in. I mean, it. I, I don't know how they think up this stuff. The elephants got huge pots on top, and even the baby elephants carrying a load this year of. Oh. of things on its back so it's just uh it, it's fun to, they have a lot of fun in there it's hard work hard work but they have a lot of fun well and i um think that your infectious um energy and um and happiness um rubbed off on a lot of people i'm going to give you credit for some of the great things that happened there and i'm looking forward um to seeing you and all the wonderful work that's gone into making this annual event so exciting thanks so much Thank you. It's a pleasure.